In mathematics, particularly linear algebra and functional analysis, a spectral theorem is a result about when a linear operator or matrix can be diagonalized that is, represented as a diagonal matrix in some basis. This is extremely useful because computations involving a diagonalizable matrix can often be reduced to much simpler computations involving the corresponding diagonal matrix. The concept of diagonalization is relatively straightforward for operators on finite dimensional vector spaces but requires some modification for operators on infinite dimensional spaces. In general, the spectral theorem identifies a class of linear operators that can be modeled by multiplication operators, which are as simple as one can hope to find. In more abstract language, the spectral theorem is a statement about commutative C** algebras. See also spectral theory for a historical perspective. Examples of operators to which the spectral theorem applies are self-adjoint operators or more generally normal operators on Hilbert spaces. The spectral theorem also provides a canonical decomposition, called the spectral decomposition, eigenvalue decomposition, or eigendecomposition, of the underlying vector space on which the operator acts. Augustin Louis Cauchy proved the spectral theorem for self adjoint matrices, i.e., that every real, symmetric matrix is diagonalizable. In addition, Cauchy was the first to be systematic about determinants. The spectral theorem, as generalized by John von Neumann, is today perhaps the most important result of operator theory. This article mainly focuses on the simplest kind of spectral theorem, that for a self adjoint operator on a Hilbert space. However, as noted above, the spectral theorem also holds for normal operators on a Hilbert space. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Finite dimensional case. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hermitian maps and Hermitian matrices. We begin by considering a Hermitian matrix on C n display style math b c caret n, but the following discussion will be adaptable to the more restrictive case of symmetric matrices on R n display style math b R caret n. We consider a Hermitian map A on a finite dimensional complex inner product space V endowed with a positive definite sesquilinear inner product. Display style Langle C D O T C D O T Wrangle. The Hermitian condition on a display style A means that for all x y element of V a x y equals x a y display style Langle x y Wrangle equals Langle x a Wrangle. An equivalent condition is that A topic A, where A is the Hermitian conjugate of A in the case that A is identified with a Hermitian matrix, the matrix of A can be identified with its conjugate transpose. If A is a real matrix, this is equivalent to it. A, that is, A is a symmetric matrix. This condition implies that all eigenvalues of a Hermitian map are real, it is enough to apply it to the case when x y is an eigenvector, recall that an eigenvector of a linear map A is a vector x such that x lambda x for some scalar lambda. The value lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue. Moreover, the eigenvalues are solutions to the characteristic polynomial theorem. If A is Hermitian, there exists an orthonormal basis of V consisting of eigenvectors of A. Each eigenvalue is real. We provide a sketch of a proof for the case where the underlying field of scalars is the complex numbers. By the fundamental theorem of algebra, applied to the characteristic polynomial of A, there is at least one eigenvalue λ1 and eigenvector E1. Then since Lambda one E one E one equals A E one E one equals E one 
a e 1 equals lambda 1 e 1 e 1 Display style lambda underscore one langle e underscore one e underscore one wrangle equals langle a e underscore one e underscore one wrangle equals langle e underscore one a e underscore one wrangle equals bar lambda underscore one langle e underscore one e underscore one wrangle. We find that lambda one is real. Now consider the space k equals span e one, the orthogonal complement of e one. By hermeticity, K is an invariant subspace of A applying the same argument to K shows that A has an eigenvector E2 element of K finite induction then finishes the proof. The spectral theorem holds also for symmetric maps on finite dimensional real inner product spaces, but the existence of an eigenvector does not follow immediately from the fundamental theorem of algebra. To prove this, consider A as a Hermitian matrix and use the fact that all eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix are real. If one chooses the eigenvectors of A as an orthonormal basis, the matrix representation of A in this basis is diagonal. Equivalently, A can be written as a linear combination of pairwise orthogonal projections, called its spectral decomposition. Let V lambda equals V element of V A V equals lambda V display style V underscore lambda equals V in V av equals lambda V be the eigenspace corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda. Note that the definition does not depend on any choice of specific eigenvectors. V is the orthogonal direct sum of the spaces V lambda where the index ranges over eigenvalues. In other words, if P lambda denotes the orthogonal projection onto V lambda and lambda one. Lambda m are the eigenvalues of A, then the spectral decomposition may be written as a equals lambda one p lambda one plus plus lambda m p lambda m Display style a equals lambda underscore one p underscore lambda underscore one plus c d o t s plus lambda underscore m p underscore lambda underscore m. If the spectral decomposition of a is a equals lambda one p one plus plus lambda m p M display style a equals lambda underscore one p underscore one plus c d o t s plus lambda underscore m p underscore m. Then two equals lambda one two p one plus plus lambda m two p M display style a carrot two equals lambda underscore one carrot two p underscore one plus c d o t s plus lambda underscore m carrot two p underscore m and mu equals mu lambda one p one plus plus mu lambda M P M display style mu a equals mu lambda underscore one p underscore one plus c d o t s plus mu lambda underscore m p underscore m for any scalar mu display style mu it follows that for any polynomial f one has f a equals f lambda one P one plus plus F Lambda M P M Display style F A equals F Lambda underscore one P underscore one plus C D O T S plus F Lambda underscore M P underscore M 
the spectral decomposition is a special case of both the sure decomposition and the singular value decomposition. Topic: <laughs> Normal matrices. The spectral theorem extends to a more general class of matrices. Let A be an operator on a finite dimensional inner product space. A is said to be normal if A A Topic double A. One can show that A is normal if and only if it is unitarily diagonalizable. Proof: By the sure decomposition, we can write any matrix as A. U2, where U is unitary and T is upper triangular. If A is normal, one sees that T T equals T asterisk T. Therefore, T must be diagonal since a normal upper triangular matrix is diagonal. See normal matrix. The converse is obvious. In other words, A is normal if and only if there exists a unitary matrix U such that A equals U D U display style A equals U D caret asterisk, where D is a diagonal matrix. Then, the entries of the diagonal of D are the eigenvalues of A the column vectors of U are the eigenvectors of A and they are orthonormal. Unlike the Hermitian case, the entries of D need not be real. <laughs> Compact self-adjoint operators In the more general setting of Hilbert spaces, which may have an infinite dimension, the statement of the spectral theorem for compact self-adjoint operators is virtually the same as in the finite dimensional case. Theorem. Suppose A is a compact self-adjoint operator on a real or complex Hilbert space V then there is an orthonormal basis of V consisting of eigenvectors of A each eigenvalue is real. As for Hermitian matrices, the key point is to prove the existence of at least one nonzero eigenvector. One cannot rely on determinants to show existence of eigenvalues, but one can use a maximization argument analogous to the variational characterization of eigenvalues. If the compactness assumption is removed, it is not true that every self-adjoint operator has eigenvectors. <laughs> <laughs> Bounded self-adjoint operators Topic. Possible absence of eigenvectors The next generalization we consider is that of bounded self-adjoint operators on a Hilbert space. Such operators may have no eigenvalues, for instance let A be the operator of multiplication by T on L2 0, 1, that is a phi T equals T phi T display style phi T equals T phi T. Now, a physicist would say that display style A does have eigenvectors, namely the phi T equals delta T minus T zero. Display style var phi t equals delta t t underscore zero, where delta display style delta is a Dirac delta function. A delta function, however, is not a normalizable function. That is, it is not actually in the Hilbert space L two zero one. Thus, the delta functions are generalized eigenvectors, but not eigenvectors in the strict sense. Topic. Spectral subspaces and projection valued measures In the absence of true eigenvectors, one can look for subspaces consisting of almost eigenvectors. In the above example, for example, we might consider the subspace of functions supported on a small interval A A plus E display style A A plus epsilon inside 0 1 display style 0 1 this space is invariant under a 
display style a and for any phi display style var phi in this subspace a phi display style a var phi is very close to a phi display style var phi in this approach to the spectral theorem if a display style a is a bounded self adjoint operator one looks for large families of such spectral subspaces each subspace in turn is encoded by the associated projection operator and the collection of all the subspaces is then represented by a projection valued measure one formulation of the spectral theorem expresses the operator A as an integral of the coordinate function over the operator's spectrum with respect to a projection valued measure A equals sigma A lambda D E lambda display style A equals int underscore sigma A lambda D underscore lambda when the self-adjoint operator in question is compact, this version of the spectral theorem reduces to something similar to the finite-dimensional spectral theorem above, except that the operator is expressed as a finite or countably infinite linear combination of projections, that is, the measure consists only of atoms. <laughs> <laughs> Multiplication operator version An alternative formulation of the spectral theorem says that every bounded self-adjoint operator is unitarily equivalent to a multiplication operator. The significance of this result is that multiplication operators are in many ways easy to understand. Theorem. Let A be a bounded self-adjoint operator on a Hilbert space H then there is a measure space X, sigma, mu, and a real valued essentially bounded measurable function F on X and a unitary operator U, HL2 mu, X, such that U T U equals a display style U caret asterisk two equals a, where T is the multiplication operator T phi x equals f x phi x display style T var phi x equals f x var phi x and t equals f infinity display style t equals f underscore inf t the spectral theorem is the beginning of the vast research area of functional analysis called operator theory see also the spectral measure there is also an analogous spectral theorem for bounded normal operators on hilbert spaces the only difference in the conclusion is that now f may be complex valued Topic. Direct integrals There is also a formulation of the spectral theorem in terms of direct integrals. It is similar to the multiplication operator formulation, but more canonical. Let a be a bounded self-adjoint operator and let sigma a sigma a be the spectrum of a display style a the direct integral formulation of the spectral theorem associates two quantities to a display style a first a measure mu display style mu on sigma a display style sigma a and second a family of hilbert spaces h Lambda Lambda Element of Sigma Display style H underscore Lambda Lambda in Sigma a. We then form the direct integral Hilbert space R H Lambda D mu Lambda Display style int underscore Math BF R carrot O plus H underscore Lambda D mu Lambda the elements of this space are functions or sections s lambda lambda element of sigma 
display style s lambda lambda in sigma a such that s lambda element of h lambda display style s lambda in h underscore lambda for all lambda display style lambda the direct integral version of the spectral theorem may be expressed as follows theorem if a display style a is a bounded self adjoint operator then display style a is unitarily equivalent to the multiplication by lambda display style lambda operator on r h lambda d mu lambda display style int underscore math bf r caret o plus h underscore lambda d mu lambda for some measure mu display style mu and some family h lambda display style h underscore lambda of hilbert spaces the measure mu display style mu is uniquely determined by a display style a up to measure theoretic equivalence that is any two measure associated to the same display style a have the same sets of measure 0 the dimensions of the hilbert spaces h lambda display style h underscore lambda are uniquely determined by a display style a up to a set of mu display style mu measure 0 the spaces h lambda Display style h underscore lambda can be thought of as something like eigenspaces for a display style a. Note, however, that unless the one element set lambda display style lambda has positive measure, the space h lambda display style h underscore lambda is not actually a subspace of the direct integral thus the h lambda display style h underscore lambda s should be thought of as generalized eigenspace that is the elements of h lambda display style h underscore lambda are eigenvectors that do not actually belong to the hilbert space Although both the multiplication operator and direct integral formulations of the spectral theorem express a self-adjoint operator as unitarily equivalent to a multiplication operator, the direct integral approach is more canonical. First, the set over which the direct integral takes place the spectrum of the operator is canonical. Second, the function we are multiplying by is canonical in the direct integral approach, simply the function lambda lambda display style lambda mapsto lambda topic cyclic vectors and simple spectrum a vector phi display style var phi is called a cyclic vector for a display style a if the vectors phi phi a 2 phi display style var phi a var phi a caret 2 var phi l dots span a dense subspace of the hilbert space suppose a display style a is a bounded self adjoint operator for which a cyclic vector exists in that case, there is no distinction between the direct integral and multiplication operator formulations of the spectral theorem. Indeed, in that case, there is a measure mu display style mu on the spectrum sigma a display style sigma a of a display style a such that a display style a is unitarily equivalent to the multiplication by 
lambda display style lambda operator on l 2 sigma a mu display style l caret 2 sigma a mu this result represents a display style a simultaneously a multiplication operator and as a direct integral since l 2 sigma a mu display style l caret 2 sigma a mu is just a direct integral in which each hilbert space h lambda display style h underscore lambda is just c display style math b c not every bounded self adjoint operator admits a cyclic vector indeed by the uniqueness in the direct integral decomposition this can occur only when all the h lambda display style h underscore lambda s have dimension 1 when this happens we say that a display style a has simple spectrum in the sense of spectral multiplicity theory that is, a bounded self-adjoint operator that admits a cyclic vector should be thought of as the infinite dimensional generalization of a self-adjoint matrix with distinct eigenvalues i.e., each eigenvalue has multiplicity 1. Although not every a display style a admits a cyclic vector, it is easy to see that we can decompose the Hilbert space as a direct sum of invariant subspaces on which a display style a has a cyclic vector. This observation is the key to the proofs of the multiplication operator and direct integral forms of the spectral theorem. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Functional calculus. One important application of the spectral theorem in whatever form is the idea of defining a functional calculus. That is given a function f display style f defined on the spectrum of a display style a we wish to define an operator f a display style f a if f display style f is simply a positive power f x equals x n display style f x equals x caret n then f a display style f a is just the n t h display style n mathrm t h power of a display style a a n display style a caret n the interesting cases are where f display style f is a non-polynomial function such as a square root or an exponential either of the versions of the spectral theorem provides such a functional calculus in the direct integral version for example f a display style f a acts as the multiplication by f display style f operator in the direct integral f a s lambda equals f lambda s lambda display style f a s lambda equals f lambda s lambda that is to say each space h lambda display style h underscore lambda in the direct integral is a generalized eigenspace for f a display style f a with eigenvalue f lambda display style f lambda topic general self adjoint operators Many important linear operators which occur in analysis, such as differential operators, are unbounded. There is also a spectral theorem for self-adjoint operators that applies in these cases. 
To give an example, every constant coefficient differential operator is unitarily equivalent to a multiplication operator. Indeed, the unitary operator that implements this equivalence is the Fourier transform. The multiplication operator is a type of Fourier multiplier. In general, spectral theorem for self adjoint operators may take several equivalent forms. Notably, all of the formulations given in the previous section for bounded self adjoint operators the projection valued measure version, the multiplication operator version, and the direct integral version continue to hold for unbounded self-adjoint operators, with small technical modifications to deal with domain issues. See also Borel functional calculus Spectral theory Matrix decomposition Canonical form Jordan decomposition, of which the spectral decomposition is a special case. Singular value decomposition, a generalization of spectral theorem to arbitrary matrices. Eigen decomposition of a matrix <laughs> Notes <laughs>